Sometimes a dream can feel a long ways off, untouchable, unattainable. Perhaps you've had the thought, it's too late to start, I've missed my chance. Well, maybe you haven't. A few weeks ago, I took a rather wild ride from Vermont to Texas for the 2024 Mustang Magic, an event where trainers have had 120 days to train a wild Mustang, and here they showcase the trainability and versatility of the Mustang. But even more than that, this event served as a powerful reminder to all in attendance that maybe it's not too late to chase that untouchable dream. Join me now to experience the 2024 Mustang Magic. All right, so we're gonna go into the barns and just take a look at what's going on here. Oh my gosh, is this Waffles? Hello. People on my channel loved hers, oh, so. Well, good luck to you guys. Thank you so, much. so I found Midnight Belle here in Levi. I met her earlier this morning. She's so cool and sweet disposition, so she's probably one yeah, of my favorites. Yeah, she's pretty laid back and easy going. So we're gonna walk through. So straight ahead is the main arena. We're gonna walk to the warm-up arena now. So this is the warm-up arena here. 120 days ago, these same trainers gathered right here in Fort Worth to meet their Mustangs for the first time. When they first arrived, they had no idea which Mustang they'd be paired with for the Mustang Magic. They studied the horses and made lists of their top favorites. One by one, the trainer names were pulled from a hat and they were able to pick their Mustang. Sometimes it was their first pick on the list, but other times it wasn't. The trainers then brought their Mustangs back to their homes all over the country and began their work. But remember, these Mustangs are unhandled, so their loading and trailing experience looks quite a bit different than what most people are familiar with. Before a horse can be loaded, it has to be sorted out from the rest of the horses. Adopting a wild Mustang is not for everyone. It can be very dangerous if you don't have the appropriate knowledge, skills, experience, or facilities. Each Mustang is going to react differently to pressure. Your body position, gaze, the energy that you move with all affect the horse, as well as the size and setting of the environment and the other horses. Once the horses are sorted, they can then be loaded onto an open stock trailer. In addition to the trailer, the Bureau of Land Management requires six-foot fencing for the adult Mustang. Shelter requirements depend on the region. So 120 days ago, this buckskin left the pens as Tag 6284. She now returns as Cactus Wren, one of the Mustang Magic Mares. Hey. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Over the course of a few days, the trainers and their Mustangs will compete in four preliminary classes. The top 10 finalists will move on to the Mustang Magic Freestyle. After that night of performances, the Mustangs are auctioned off to the public. So during this event, trainers are trying to interact with people who might be interested in adopting their Mustang. Friends, welcome out. We're going to start with hit number 10. He's going to kick us off right here. Here's Chris Smith. The first day of the Mustang Magic demonstrated each Mustang's foundation. The event kicked off with the handling and conditioning class. This class covered some of the basic skills that a Mustang learns as it adjusts to the domesticated life. Levi Beach is a former member of the Amish community who has made a name for himself in the world of natural horsemanship. The Mustangs are judged on their body condition as well as how they respond to their trainer throughout several tasks. The first challenge was catching the horse. The process of catching a horse can indicate where the horse's mind is at as well as its trust in its trainer. She's been riding horses since she was two years old. This is Elisa Wallace and hit number 18. Because horses are herd animals and feel safer in numbers, they can feel anxious when they see another horse leaving. Along with that, being in a new and different environment can also be stressful. In order to be successful, the trainer has to regain the focus and attention of the horse. Chris did start riding horses since he was 45, now 59, with the support of his wife and daughters. He's turned horse training into his second career. Here's Chris Phillips, coming to us from Aid Ball in Utah, hit number 15, WFR, Boca Bandelante. When I heard the announcer say that Chris didn't start riding until he was 45, my ears perked right up. I wanted to know more about this story. Many of the Mustang trainers seem to have started working with horses at a very young age, but I found it incredibly inspiring to see someone with a late start here at an event like this. I know there are so many horse lovers out there who didn't have the opportunity or privilege to grow up with horses. I remember that intense longing I had as a child. Whether it's horses, another hobby, or something else, I think we all know what it's like to have a late start on something. It's hard and intimidating to get started, but if we're honest, sometimes we can really put a lot of self-limitations on ourselves. It's really easy to think it's too late or I'll never get that far, but 
This is a shining example of what's possible when you work hard and persist through those challenges. Now the final challenge of the handling and conditioning class was loading and unloading from a trailer. Loading is something that many horses, even ones that have been domesticated their entire lives, can struggle with. Going into a tight, dark, confined space completely goes against its survival instincts. The final horse of this class was Waffles, and from the beginning it was evident she was special. When it was time for the trainer to leave the pen, she followed and then lingered at the gate. Her quiet mind and willing attitude were on display the entire class. All right, so the first class is over, handling and conditioning. Uh, I have to say, I really liked Midnight Bell, Waffles, and then um, Mocha Bay Latte I really liked. Those ones, at this point, are my top three favorites. The trainers walked the pattern before beginning the next class, Mustang Maneuvers. This class built off of the previous one, continuing to show more of the Mustang's foundation, displaying the basic gates, transitions, and maneuvers. They started with a trot and moved into the extended trot, and you can see the rider pick up the posting or rising trot. Then on the bend, they transitioned to the right lead lope. Asking a horse to canter or lope on a curve will naturally help it to bend to the inside and pick up the correct lead. After loping down the straight, they went right into a stop. Then they had to reverse directions by pivoting on the hindquarters. The next challenge was picking up the lope from the walk, but this time they had to do it on the straight, which is a little bit trickier. Without the natural bend from the curve, the trainer has to work to position the horse's body and its balance so that it's able to pick up the correct lead. Similar to partner dancing, maneuvers like this require the lead role to be fully aware of where their partner's balance and feet are at all times. The Mustangs then had to drop down to a trot, and then stop and back. And that concluded the Mustang Maneuvers class, which was immediately followed by a Meet the Mustang opportunity. Here the interested adopters get a chance to chat with the trainers and learn a little bit more about each of the horses. All right, I ran into Krista and Kawana Cascade. How do you feel about her classes today? You know, she did better in both of them than I expected. We were 10th in our condition and handling, but felt great in the maneuvers, and I could not have asked her to be Awesome. I then went to the wall to go check on the scores for the day. Tied for first place in handling and conditioning were Waffles and Mocha Bay Latte. First place in Mustang maneuvers was Kiwana Cascade. All right, so Cassie, Kiwana Cascade, just won the Mustang maneuvers class, didn't you? I heard a crowd gathering and went to go see what was happening. What's going on here? No, Harlem Globetrotter. Oh, that's good. Oh, thank you. Welcome to Fort Worth. I'm watching you, sis. One of the Harlem Globetrotters was at another event, but wanted to stop by and meet a Mustang in person. Thank you so much. I think he really enjoyed and appreciated the opportunity to meet Midnight Bell. She was perfect. We're going to kick it off with Midnight Bell. Hip number five is going to start us here. The next day started with the trail class, and immediately the first obstacle proved to be a challenge. When the Mustangs first entered the arena, they encountered a bridge. While approaching it may not be a big deal to us, to the Mustang, it's a potential threat. One thing to remember is that it was just 120 days ago that these Mustangs were completely unhandled. That can be easy to forget. I'm guessing these Mustangs have all mastered a bridge at home, but whenever you go to a new setting, it's as if the obstacle becomes new as well. So as the trainer prepares a Mustang for an event like this, part of their preparation includes trailing the Mustang off-site to a variety of environments. Even still, obstacles can be tricky. Following the bridge was the pinwheel, which is another tricky obstacle. The horses had to lope over this, so it is pretty difficult to get the spacing right. From there, they had to lope into a box and do a stop. Moving along, they had to go through a gate while mounted, a pretty common obstacle. Most of the Mustangs did very well at this. The last obstacle of the trail class was a ground pole that they had to side pass over, first to the left and then to the right. Never too late to get into the horse business, that is for sure. This is hip number 15. This is Chris Phillips of Avon, Utah, and WFR Mocha Bay Latte, the six-year-old baby. One of the last competitors was the trainer who didn't start riding until he was 45. I appreciated how he acknowledged the try of his Mustang, giving big releases when she was clearly trying her best. It took a little bit of time, but it built up her trust and confidence to walk over it. 
It's like the saying goes, take the time it takes so it takes less time. All right, these are the scores. So waiting to find out. Not surprisingly, Waffles won the trail class. In second place was Black Widow. Here's the warm up rank. Horses are getting ready for their final class. Tomorrow they're gonna announce the top 10 finalists who will move on to the top 10 freestyle. The Mustang Magic Freestyle. The final preliminary class of the Mustang Magic was the Compulsory Maneuvers class. They entered the arena and loped down the center to a stop and then completed a rollback. In this class, the Mustangs also exhibited spins or pivots in both directions and they were also required to side pass both to the right and then to the left. The next maneuver was another pretty challenging one, the flying lead change. The Mustang started out on the right lead and as the name suggests, mid-flight the horse rearranges its feet and switches the lead. This is a difficult maneuver and once again keep in mind these Mustangs have had only 120 days of training. Now the one and only English competitor in this event was Elisa Wallace with Dior. These Mustang events aren't typically designed with the English rider in mind. However, in September is the first of its kind English Mustang competition called the Mustang Classic. It's one of two new events put on by the Mustang Champions, who is also the sponsor of this video. One big difference about these two events is trainers have up to a year to train their Mustangs. In fact, Elisa is already training her horse for the Mustang Classic. And not only was she here to compete in the Mustang Magic, but she was also here to compete in another special night of performances, the Mustang Champions Freestyle. This event followed the four preliminary classes, but was separate from the Mustang Magic competition. Over the weekend, spectators were immersed in a Mustang world and had many opportunities to see all that these horses are capable of. This event invited top Mustang performers across the U.S., and each performer had to give a freestyle that was judged largely on its entertainment value. They were evaluated on their themes, costumes, props, as well as their horsemanship and the maneuvers they displayed. I love seeing these lead changes done from the ground. The main requirement was they had to have at least one BLM Mustang in their performance, but they could include other people and other horses as well. The judges also evaluated the performances by the audience's reaction, and this last freestyle had the audience fully engaged. It wasn't a surprise then when Nate Eicher won the Mustang Champions Freestyle. All right, this is a lifesaver, thank you. Got my cup of coffee here. The next day began with announcing results from the Compulsory Maneuvers class. First place went to Carmela, followed by Mocha Bay Latte. Looking at the overall scores from the four preliminary classes, in first place was Carmela, followed by Waffles, and then Mocha Bay Latte. These three, along with seven others, will be competing in the top 10 freestyles. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together collectively for our top 10 that we'll be showing this evening. Congrats. Hi. You feeling kind of special? I went back to the barns and while I was walking through, I saw a familiar face. In fact, some of you might remember him from my video from the Fort Worth Mustang show. Alejandro and his trainer, Sophie, placed in the top 10. And after the event, Sophie bid on him so she could bring him home. He now returns to Fort Worth, not to compete, but to give a demonstration as part of Sophie's Liberty team. Ladies and gentlemen, Sophie Douglas, one of our great young trainers, doing a phenomenal job with the Liberty Horses. Thank you, Sophie. As I said earlier, this weekend was a full immersion of Mustangs, inspiring the audience and showing what is possible. Before the Mustang Magic Top 10 Freestyles, there was one more demonstration done by two trick riders who perform exclusively on Mustangs. One of the crazy things was one of the performers was only 13 years old. The pair had performed the previous night, bringing more entertainment to the Mustang Champions Freestyle. 
I unfortunately missed the demonstration as I went back into the barns to do an interview. Inspiration can be found in all shapes and sizes. Maybe it's a Liberty performance, maybe a 13 year old trick rider, or maybe someone who didn't start riding until they were 45. Hey guys, so I am at the Mustang Magic with Chris Phillips and Mocha Bay Latte. 18 years ago, Chris had gotten a horse for his daughter. After their trainer quit, he didn't know what to do. And we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. I'd never been around horses. And so I actually ended up going to Utah State through their equine program. The students, as you know, were like 18 to 20, <laughs> mostly females. Yeah. And they could ride. I could not. It was very humbling. I asked a lot of questions and tried to learn. Mm -hmm. I could see a lot of the other students were like there to just have fun. Like, oh, yeah. this is going to be an easy class. Let's do an equine class. So You took it seriously. Yes, yeah. I took it seriously. Did you have any advantages, do you think, to starting later in life that someone who maybe yes. grew up yeah, tell us. <laughs> they kept telling me that, like, I had no bad habits. Mm -hmm. Like, people ride all their life, and they'll go into the program, and then they, they have all these bad habits. For me, I was a clean slate, yeah. so I, and I started learning from professional teachers, mm -hmm. you know, so. How do you feel about this weekend's I, competition? She is a better horse than last year, but mm -hmm. she is a horse. Yeah. So you'd never know what's going to happen, because you can't simulate 4,000 people screaming and yelling. Yeah. So... That's the thing. Yeah. You try to get it so they trust you as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So when I say, no, we can do this, she goes, okay, if you say so. What are you, kind of home are you hoping she goes into? Um, I mean, she's got a lot of talent, but if somebody just wanted her for like a trail horse and just love on her, mm -hmm. I would love that. Yeah. You're very cute. Yeah, you know, you know it. After competing in the four preliminary classes over the course of two days, it was now time to find the champion. The trainers were introduced to the audience, and then it was time to begin the Mustang Magic Top 10 Freestyles.
After the last freestyle, they brought the competitors back into the arena. It was time to name the champion. They began giving out the award, starting with 10th place. This was Midnight Bell, followed by Kiwana Cascade, Fluttershy, She's Nothing Fancy, Dior, Waffles, Black Widow, and Little Bitty. This left two remaining competitors, Justice Jacobs with Carmella and Chris Phillips with Mocha Bay Latte. They announced the reserve champion as Justice Jacobs with Carmella. And this left the man who didn't start riding until 45, now competing at 59 as the champion of the 2024 Mustang Magic. It's Chris Phillips and Jimmy It was incredible to see someone who started horses late in life, not only at this event, but now it's champion. Immediately following, they began auctioning the horses off. You know, this is the story that we talked about all week long. A guy that just started late in the game, knocking on 60 years old. I tell you what, I'm proud of it right here. 11,000, I'm give 11,000. Sell it, takes away 10,500. Everybody gather around and take a look right here. This buckskin mare right here is Waffles. I got five, six, six out. Six out, we're gonna get a good ugly feet, six, six, seven, twelve, five, twelve, five, and we're gonna get a good five, and we're gonna get a good five. Now 13, 13, now five. 14, five, last call, five. Selling $14,000 for us as well. Thank you. The auction was an exciting time for some of the bidders, including one who seemed to have their heart set on Black Widow. We have 18, 2,000, 2, now 22, 22, now 5, 25, now 7. Kenny, you're out, 27, 27, now 5, 5, 7. 4,000, 4,000, we're going to get a little bit too far. Now 57, 57. Send no, sell to Kenny's wife, 5,500. All right, you got him. <laughs> it was also an emotional time for the trainers, as it marked the end of a journey that began right here 120 days ago. And somehow, this was also an emotional and reflective time for those in the audience, inspired by the story of a man who didn't start riding until 45. But not everyone has dreams of training Mustangs or winning big events. It might just be the joy of having a bond and connection with one of these magnificent animals. Whatever your dreams, this night was a powerful reminder that even those seemingly untouchable dreams are possible. And that's why for so many, this weekend was more than just Mustang magic. This weekend added sparks of hope into dreams.